Well, amen. Good morning, Blended Church. Well, guess who's back? I'm proud and honored to be here this morning. I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 54, verses 1 through 5. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to share what I believe God has spoken to my heart about this church. A little bit of paraphrasing in my part in order not to mispronounce too many words this morning. Because let me tell you, my English is not getting any better. <laughs> Whatever, whoever said it. <laughs> Anyways, sing, O barren, you who have not had a child. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let him stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations Amen. and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgrace, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth. And you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Amen. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Yes. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Amen. He is called the God of the whole earth. Yes, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, most of us will, will never know the sadness felt by women who have never bear a child, never given birth to a child. Uh, especially uh, in those times in the, uh, to Eastern women, it was a difficult experience. Uh, it was a, uh, it, it was just tough to deal with. They were looking, uh, they were looked down upon, they were humiliated and mistreated just because they were childless. If you want to get a glimpse of how that was, how women felt about that, and how families felt about that, I encourage you to read the first book of Samuel, chapter 1. There you will find a lady called Hannah, whose husband was named Elkanah. And Elkanah loved his wife, he loved Hannah, but she could not give birth to a child. And the Bible says that she stopped eating, she was constantly crying, stopped eating, and then it says that she was in bitterness of soul as she prayed for a child. Her husband, Elkanah, tried to Main things and made things better for her in many ways, I'm sure. But no amount of bling bling, no amount of dining and whining, and no amount of presence was enough for her. He goes as far as to say, am I not better than 10 children? And she said, nope. <laughs> Something like that. So many of us, we will never know the, the, the sadness and, and the feeling. But most of us know what is to have a hole in your heart, so to speak. Yeah. Amen. Most of us know the sadness, the frustration of the difficulty of not feeling in sync with what God is doing. Yeah. Most of us know the frustration and the condemnation of not being able to even raise our thoughts in adoration, in worship, in praise to our God as He deserves. 
changes might be happening in your life. Things might not be going well. You feel unproductive, ineffective, and uh, tired, maybe, anguish, harass, misunderstood, bullied, broken, broke, unfruitful, ineffective, sick, confused, discouraged, angry. Maybe just a little. Amen. I seen you drive. You're driving. <laughs> Good Lord, 10 years in Indianapolis. <laughs> How about useless? Come on. Useless. That might be the latest lie that the enemy has been trying to plant in your thoughts. Yeah. And for that reason, for that reason, your demeanor, your countenance has fallen. Your soul is afflicted, and your spirit depressed. But hey, come on this morning. I have a word of God for you. I got the word of God for you. And it's this, break out in singing. What? Break out in singing? Yeah, why not? Haven't you ever done it? Even if it's just to say, I'm going through changes. <laughs> Just do it. Cry aloud. Enlarge the place of your tent. Yeah. Let them stretch the curtains of your habitations. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right, to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations. I believe it with all my heart. And make the desolate cities inhabited. What does that translate for us? For us, it means deliverance. Amen. For us, it means healing. Amen. For us, it means restoration. For us, it means more. It means bigger. It means better. Amen. For those of us who feel frustrated because we are not what we ought to be, or where we want to be, I am here to tell you, lift up your eyes into the hills because your salvation comes from the Lord. His plans will not fail. His purposes will not falter. Even in your old age, Isaiah 46 verse 4 declares, even to your old age, I am He. Yes, sir, you are. Woo! And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. Amen. And then he says, I have made, I will bear, and even I will carry, and I will deliver you. Amen. How about that? Praise God. How about that for a God, for a Savior, Amen. for a promise, for a blessing to come? Most of, most of us, Know about commitment for a year, two years, three years, ten years, whatever. Well, things uh, are still up and not so wrinkled up. But then gray hairs and wrinkles and, and weird noises begin to happen when you sleep or uh, either way. And then, you know, you know, but listen, God says, I am committed to you. This is my level of commitment. We used to sing a song that said, I'll stand in your word. I'll stand in your promise. And I am here to encourage you and to declare prophetically by the word of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 12 where he says, I will declare your name to my brothers. Blended church, we will declare the word of God, the name of Jesus to our city to our nation, to our neighborhoods, to our kids, to the nations of the world. I will declare your name to my brothers 
in the midst of the congregation, I will sing to you. Yes, sir, I will. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, I am here, but not by myself. I am here with the children whose God, whom God has given me. I trust in your word. I trust in your promise. So whatever your state of the union may be, I want to encourage you to remain humble. To be grateful to him. To praise him. Because he is at work. He is working. He is blessing. He is blessing us. He's working in our families. He's working. And our children all around us will be our witnesses. Amen. And those are great news for all of us, but especially if you find yourself far from God this morning, for whatever reason. For whatever reason. You need to know that God loves you. Amen. You need to know that God is passionate about you. You know that God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, and died in the cross of Calvary because he wanted you. He wants you. Listen, listen. You might feel empty this morning, but that can change the moment you confess him as Lord and Savior. The moment you confess your sin before him, he will forgive you and make you a new creation. I know that is true for me. Amen. Amen. I was trying to count 43, at least 43 years ago. God saved my life. Amen. My life changed. This truth changed me forever. Forever. Because Christ came to me, made me a new creation, and then I begin to see things and to think in ways and aspire to things that I could never have imagined. Amen. Come on. Yes, Lord. Never. And that can happen to you this morning. Amen. You know, you might say, hey, pastor, but this prophecy, Isaiah 54, it's already been fulfilled. Well, yes. But the message of it, the message of it is a direction to us. Yes. To us, the desire to see the church of Jesus Christ, the bride of Christ, flourish and grow and reach out to the world. And yes, I will not interpret this passage in its strict connection, but I will use it for our comfort and for our instruction. Yes. What I'm trying to tell you is this. Make ready for God's blessing. Amen. Make ready for God's blessing. God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. God wants to heal you. God is at work on your life. Please answer the door. Come on now. Somebody pick up the phone. Hello. Amen. Please respond at a personal level, as a family, as a church, as a community, especially those of us who groan and who cry out for greater things than this in God's work. I want to bless you, is the word of the Lord. I want to bless you. My blessing is coming and let me repeat it again enlarge your tents lengthen the cores and strengthen your stakes prepare for the coming blessing for the glory of the latter house shall be greater Amen. isn't that what Haggai chapter 2 says verses 3 verses 5 verse 9 who is left among you he says who saw this temple in its former glory. And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Ooh. But then he goes and speaks to Zerubbabel and to Joshua and to the people of the land and say, you know what, guys? Whatever you think, keep working. 
However you feel, keep trusting. Keep going. Go to work. Go back to work. So maybe that's what I'm here to tell you this morning. Blend the church. There's a lot of stuff going on around us. Prophecy being fulfilled left and right and good things and bad things and this and that. But listen, let's keep working. Let's keep working. Let's keep going in the name of Jesus. Right now is not the time to relax and take a break. I am with you. God says to Joshua and Zerubbabel, to what extent, Lord? In verse 5, he says, according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. Do you remember do you remember? And so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. And then he says, I will keep us on to say how he's going to shake up the nations and say, and then the desire of the nations will come. What is that talking about? Remember how he says the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former? Amen. Then I believe what God is saying. My blessing is going to come to Jerusalem and the temple there from all over the world. The beauty and the riches and the greatness of the nations will come there. And the glory of the house, of the latter house, will be greater than the glory of the former house. I don't know what that means to you, but I love the church. Amen. And I remember good old days, if you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. God blessing and people getting saved, and people's life being transformed immediately by the power of God, and God is still doing it. And I believe that as the end approaches, I believe as days go by, we will see this movement of God increase and get stronger and stronger and bigger and bigger in the name of Jesus. Blend the church. Let us go to work. Let's keep working for Jesus. Amen. Amen. To Joshua, in chapter 3 of the book, God says, tell the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Amen. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. So maybe that's what I'm here to tell you. Please stop playing around. Come on. Come on. Get with the program, will you? Get out of your... Whatever, please. Whatever, please. Please. Whatever you're into, drop it, leave it. Come on, come on. Repent. Turn your heart to God. Amen. God is trying to do great things among us. Amen. God wants to bless us. God wants to prosper his church. God wants to make his work flourish among us. Let us set ourselves apart for the things that God is about to do among us in the name of Jesus. Stop the sadness. Stop the belly aching. Believe God. Look forward with ante anticipation. God is doing good things among you. Good things are coming to you. Good things are coming to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. John the Baptist came in the middle of the desert, Judean desert, preaching. Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he says again, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. I hear that in my heart. I hear that in my spirit. Repent. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Amen. Peter, in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, says, repent and be converted. That your sins may be forgiven. So that times of refreshing, of restoration, of renewal, of life will come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 I don't know what you are going to, through. 
But I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will just break into the holes of your mind and your heart. And you will hear his voice. Amen. What are those things dragging you back? Come on. What is that hook yeah. the enemy has on you? Pulling you back time and time and time again. Why are you not enlarging? Why are you not enlarging? How come there's no growth in your personal life, even your spiritual life? How come you're spinning the wheels in the same place a year after year? What, 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 what's happening here? What's happening? What are those things that confine your growth? You go to a certain point. And each of us might have different answers. But I want to tell you, we all may have a common denominator. And it is this. Complacency. It's a comfortable trap. Amen. Complacency. It's a comfortable trap. The thing about it is that we don't know that we are complacent, that we're being complacent. We don't notice it until it's late. And then, then we lose opportunities to, to in our business, business deals per se, we, we lose opportunities for restoration of relationships. We lose opportunities for personal growth. But most of all, we lose opportunities to be used of God. Amen. Get on your comfort zone, they say. Find your comfort zone, they say. They never tell tells us that our comfort zone is home to complacency. And complacency is a smug sense that you are where you need to be and that there's no room for improvement, nothing more can be discovered, and nothing more can be achieved. You're just fine and dandy. Come on. Complacency is a comfortable trap. Complacency is disengagement. You know, like, you don't, know, you, you don't really know what's going on, what's happening Whose job is it? Whose responsibility is it? You know, whose bill? You, you, just, you just don't know. You just, you're just here for the next 30 minutes. It's disengagement. Some of you may be, it might be, has been a long time since you felt scared or nervous about anything. And you might say, oh, because I got my stuff together. Really? Come on. Let me submit to you. It might be because it's been a long time since you made the investment into something. Come on. It's been a long time since you believed so much in something or someone, a vision, a mission, a purpose. It's been such such a long time since you found that pearl of great price, remember? Come on. You haven't been by that piece of land with the hidden treasure in years. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You're satisfied. You are just living too safe. Come on. You haven't been pushed to believe God, to trust God. You haven't been pushed to even ask, Lord God, Lord God, is this you, Lord? Is this, is this you? If it's you, I, yeah, I want to obey. I want to go, but, but Lord, please help me understand here. You have lost your sense of readiness. Come on. You know, ready like, a, like somebody at guard, like a policeman at guard, like a soldier at guard. You have lost your sense of readiness. You just got comfortable. Complacent. You got it going on. You know, sleep at the wheel. And we know what happens when we get, when we lose that sense of readiness. 
What happens? Balloons begin to fly all over the place. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Balloons begin to fly from Montana to Missouri, back to Oklahoma, to. Then people begin to parachute over the wall and tragedies and stuff, horrible stuff happens. Why is that? I thought we had it. I thought it was, I was in charge. I thought I had it under control. Come on. You got complacent, disengaged. Amen. You lost your sense of readiness. Your sense of urgency is not there anymore. You know that sense of urgency, like when you think, when you believe something is really important, something should really be prioritized, and you drop everything else and leave everything else until this thing is done. Come on. It's not there anymore. Come on. And if I get to it, I get to it. If it happens, it happens. Sophonia chapter 1 verse 12 scared the fire out of me. Because he says, ah, it shall come to pass at the time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who have settled in complacency, who say in their heart, listen to this, this is scary. They say in their heart, God ain't doing anything. He's not going to do good. He's not going to do evil. He's not going to reward anybody. He's not going to punish any, anybody. We, just, we can just drop the tools right here and take a break. I said, let's take a break. Then people at Iglesia Triunfo, one of those Saturdays, on the scaffolding, they begin to drop like flies. No, they didn't fall. They just begin to quit. Yeah. We've been there since early, and then you got like 10, 30 in the morning, and one of them say, Pastor, uh, I got to go. But, uh, I mean, we're not done. Pastor, I'm sorry. Well, like 30 minutes later, another one. Pastor, I, I got to go. And then another. And then until one of them, one of my newest friends in Iglesia Triunfo, he said, he said, guys, guys, we don't quit because we're tired. We don't quit because it's late. We quit because we are done. And I want to give you that word this morning. Yeah. Let's continue to go. Let's continue to grow. Let's continue to flourish. Let's continue to trust the Lord. Let's believe God against all odds in the name of Jesus. Let's strengthen our stakes and stretch the places of our habitation in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let's share in the mission. Now, here's a crazy statistic, at least to me. 97% of the world has heard of Coca-Cola. 97%. 70% has seen a can of Coca-Cola. 51% of the people in the world has tasted a can of Coca-Cola. I guess we can say that Coke has been around for a long time. Coca-Cola, that is. For a long time. And why is it? Why is it? The real thing, whether for some people it's the real thing, for us, for us Latinos, the real thing didn't work. For us Latinos, is. La chispa de la vida, the spark of life. Glue, 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 yes. <laughs> but one thing, we, one thing we need to realize, and it's the fact that they share in the mission. Yeah. And let me tell you, let me tell you, as a people, uh, 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 in a church, we need to stay focused in the mission, and we need to lift the mission often. Amen. I heard our pastor Wednesday said, I love people. It doesn't matter, nationality, 
color and skin doesn't. We love people. Blended church and the ministry of blended church is about people. We believe God for people. We build for people. We invest for people. We work for people. Amen. We're not perfect, but we're forgiven. Amen. We don't always look at things the same way, but we are united in one assignment. We might don't understand everybody completely, but we love them. Amen. We might not be there yet, but we're getting there. Amen. We are on our way. Here at the Blended Church, I'm here to tell you, our greater days are still ahead. Oh. Still ahead. And let me tell you why. Paul told the Philippians, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 15, jump to there. Now you Philippians also know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed to Macedonia, no one shared with me concern, concerning giving and receiving, but you only. What did Paul and the church of Philippians had in purpose, had in, uh, in, in common? They share mission. They share mission. They were all about saving souls. They were all about preaching the gospel. Everything they did, they did it together because of a common, common mission. Amen. Things are about to go a little different for you here, maybe. Paul says in verse 19, after he tells the Philippians how they provided for him and shared in that mission. He said, God will provide for you, for all your needs, according to his riches and glory. Listen to this. Do you see the connection? So here's a group of people sharing a mission. And here's God providing for the needs Amen. of people. And this is what happened when we share mission. Needs get supplied. When we share in the mission. Restoration and healing and second chances are afforded to others because we share in the mission. You want me to be more specific? All right. The word of God is going forth from TVC because of a share mission. Youth, children, pastors, church leaders, volunteers are being trained around the world because we share in the mission. Churches are being built and established because we share in the mission. Every other week, first weekend and third weekend of every month, 200 plus, an average of 200 plus families are being fed out of our West 34 campus because we share in the mission. So souls are being saved. Lives are being changed. We're reaching out to our city. We're reaching out to the world because we share in the mission. So let me just borrow from the words of Steve Jobs, who once said, we are not selling sugar water. We are changing the, the world. Amen. And this is the gospel we preach. This is the God we serve. This is the people we are. Here we have lifted the downtrodden. We build this for you, we say. Here we point people to purpose. Here we help others find significance in their life in Jesus Christ for the fame of his name. Woo! First King chapter 10, the queen of Sheba went to see Solomon and, to, and just to hurt him, to hear him. And thank you. And... And she was, blown, she was blown away. She says, it was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. You know, she took, dude, she took bling, bling, things, spices and stuff that smell good, you know, smell good stuff to Solomon. And, and she was like, sir, in verse 7 said, however, I did not believe the words until I came and saw it with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceeds the, fa the fame of which I heard. And blend the church, this is what I believe about us. I believe that half has not been told. The story continues to be written. 
Help has not been told. So I declare to blend the church in the name of Jesus. Break forth into singing, blend the church. Cry aloud, blend the church. Enlarge the place of your tent, blend the church. Let them stretch the curtains of your habitations, blend the church. Do not spare, blend the church. Do not spare, blend the church. Do not spare. Lengthen your course and strengthen your, your, your states. For you shall expand to the right, to the left, and the descendants. Your descendants will inherit the nations. So where are you going? I want to extend. I want to strengthen my stakes. I want to strengthen my cords. And the Bible promised me, promised us that we will grow to our right and to our, uh, into our left. And I want to encourage you this morning, blend the church. Will you grow? Will you make the change? Will you make the commitment? Will you believe God? Will you trust God? Do it. Do it for yourself. Do it for your faith. Do it for your community. In the name of Jesus. Do it. Do it for your people. Do it for your kids. Do it for your, for your health. Do it for your finances. Do it. Don't stay where you are. Do it in the name of Jesus. Do it in the name of Jesus. How much, how far should I go? Well, dude, oh, God is greater than that. Let me extend as far as I can in the name of Jesus. For my health, for my people, for the Iglesia Triunfo, for the church, for the nations of the world, for finances, for health, for peace of mind, for joy in my spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, remain standing. Remain standing. How do we get started? How do we get this thing going? Hey, pay close attention to your personal growth. Amen. You cannot stay where you are Amen. and expect things to be different. This morning, come with to Jesus. If you haven't, do it. If you have already committed to him, but not one like you should, sanctify yourself. I don't have to holler at you from here. You know it. Right now, say, Lord, I commit to you. Lord, I commit to you. Lord, give me the faith. Lord, give me the strength. Lord, help me. In Jesus' name. How do I do it? Do it by Paying attention to your personal growth. We want to see some fruits. You want to see some fruits. How do we do it? Host people into this church. I said host people into this church. Force me out of my chair, my goodness. Amen. Host people into this church. Oh, Pastor, I would like to be involved. You know, you'll say it all the time, but I just know how to. Hey, listen. Volunteer. And in doing so, gain some experience. Amen. Put it under your belt. By serving. By helping. And don't stop giving. Give. Give your time. Give your talent. And give your treasure. Father, I thank you. Lord Jesus, as I arouse you people into vision and mission... By the proclamation of your word, I pray in your name that their needs be met. Give him a miracle today. Save those who humbly reach out to you asking for forgiveness this morning. Deliver those who are bound by addictions and perversion. Heal the sicknesses that annoy our bodies. Bring peace of mind and joy to our spirit. Rebuke depression among us. Lack of faith. Complacency. Be rebuked in the name of Jesus. Lead us, oh God, by your spirit. Give us clear direction. Give us insight. Give us understanding in our lives. 
Help us. Help us to catch the intention of this house. Help us to catch the intention, to see it, to get it, to arrest it, to own it, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father God, we commit to you. We commit to you. We commit to your vision and to your mission, to your will. We will continue to run with it. In Jesus' name. If you need prayer, we're here to pray for you and with you. To believe God with you. Thank you for listening to me.